Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we are going to be going over the initial setup and considerations for Ableton Live 10. And I'm not going to be going through all the options in the preferences window. That is kind of pointless. There's no context to those things quite yet. And I don't want to overwhelm you. So don't worry, I'm not going to do that. I'm assuming that you have a computer any kind of laptop made within the last five years will run Ableton Live. Um, all you need is a computer and headphones. You may be tempted to go off and buy a bunch of equipment, but it's not going to instantly make you better or instantly help you understand kind of what's going on. Uh, as, yeah, all you need is a pair of headphones and a laptop to get started. So don't don't worry about that too much. You've noticed that I cheated a little bit. Ableton Live is already installed on my computer. Uh, I skipped ahead a little bit. But if you don't have it already, I recommend that you go to their website and you can try a 30-day trial. It's fully functional. You can give it a try. You can watch these videos. You can watch other videos. You can learn. And you're going to have a great time once you get the, the hang of all this. So you can try it for free. And I recommend that after the 30 days, you consider buying an edition. There's three different editions here. There is the intro, standard, and suite. The intro version is limited, quote-unquote limited, but it's still pretty functional and fantastic. Um, it's you know, it's not actually that limited. You still have your group tracks, you have your VST support, you have your MIDI, you have multi-track recording, non-destructive audio, you know, all the fun stuff, capture MIDI. So it's, it's, it's all there, really. The limitation is you can only have 16 tracks, but starting out, you're not going to have that many, right? Like, you know, I didn't have any more than 10 when I was starting out. So that, that's a quote-unquote limitation. But it allows you to uh, get an addition and support people that do just amazing work. And you know, it's, it's actually very affordable. This Don't go off and buy the sweet version right away. Uh, if you don't know what's going on, get the intro version, and uh, you know it's, it's very, very well priced. I think it's like 120 bucks, which is six pizzas. So, you know, take that into consideration. It's a really great program, and it's you have it forever. The system requirements. Um, choosing a computer. Any computer in the last, you know, f five years will be able to handle this. The, the requirements are very good, you know. Like, it goes all the way back to Windows 7. Um, Windows 10 is recommended, you know, 64-bit. You need a 64-bit operating system, but, you know, most likely you do. The processor does matter, and I'm hesitant to get into this, but for Ableton Live and DAWs in general, it's not the core count that matters, it's actually the core frequency. So the single core performance, uh, and I I can't go over a you know a, a you know a buying a laptop or computer buying guide because it changes all the time. One of the most important specifications is price. But if you look at the benchmarks of a particular CPU and you look at single core performance, that's what you're looking at. So you know four cores with you know really good um, single core performance, you're good. So like i5 preferably an i7, but i5 is fine. Uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM, that's pretty easy, and all this other stuff you don't necessarily need to worry about. And that's for PC. For Mac, now this is very important, uh, the, the maximum um, OS that your Mac can go up to um, dictates if, whether or not you can run uh, Live 10. On our... 2009 MacBook Pro, it's barely, you're barely able to run Ableton Live 10 on there because the, the operating system can't go any higher. So that's kind of a 
one of the one of the many downfalls of Macs. If you already have a Mac, that's fine, but uh, you know, just keep that in consideration. And a consideration in a downfall with Mac uh, computers is often updates. I think it's Cortana or something like that that's about to come out. Is it's everyone all the developers of you know, digital music production is saying, do not update because it's going to break everything. And uh, you'll never know, it might not be, uh, you, 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 things will break and it's a pain and you have to get updates and stuff like that. So that's one of those things. Um, an update on Windows never really broke anything for me. Uh, well, an update in Windows 10 never did. So uh, keep that in, uh, keep that in mind. So there's that. So when you download Ableton Live and install it and open it for the first time, you're going to see a demo song. And that's not really helpful for what's going on here. So I want you to go up to the top and then just hit File, New Live Set, right? Even if you don't see the demo song, just go New Live Set. And what is a set? A project file is a set. So Ableton Live files are called sets. They are folders that have everything in them, right? Because Ableton Live was initially designed for live performance and stuff like that. So you know you have your live set, DJ set, that's what they're called, sets. So there's that. So we need to, you know, confirm that we see this open here. First thing we want to do is confirm that we have sound. So we're going to go into the options drop down here and then go all the way to the bottom to preferences. Preferences is very important. It's a crazy confusing window. I'm going to open it. Don't be scared. So this is the preferences window. On the left are all of these tabs. So everything is organized in tabs. You can click around and stuff like that. I encourage you to do that. We're going to want to settle on audio, right? This is the audio options tab or audio preferences. This is everything to do with audio here. So we're going to go down to test tone. I want you to do this with me because this is an introduction to how you, how you, uh, you know, push things and have things move and be affected within Ableton Live. There's this off button and you can toggle it on and off and it's a test tone and we'll hit it on. And uh, yeah, we'll see that there is a test tone. We've confirmed that sound works. I'm gonna double click that. So it's actually, when you first press it, it might be a little bit quiet. And down here is the test tone volume. And what this is, is it is in a dB scale. So it's a relative scale. So how dB work and how audio works in uh, DAWs is, you know, the absolute maximum is zero. Zero is called unity, right? So there's unity, which is set from your, you know, your, your interface, your interface or your sound card or what you're hearing. It's a relativistic scale. So unity is zero, which is the absolute la the maximum amount you can go up to without getting clipping. Every, everything in audio has something called unity, which is zero. And the scale of this volume is 36 dB decibels below unity. So if we click this, I want you to click this right now. Click it and try to move it by moving it left and right. Like it's not doing anything, right? You would think that clicking this and then moving this would move it up, but it's not. That's because all of the um, sliders, knobs, and things that allow you to edit values within Ableton Live are all consistent, right? Whether they're horizontal, uh, vertical or a knob clicking and holding and moving up and right will move everything kind of the, the same way up and down it'll increase the value as you click and move up decrease it when you move it down and this is kind of weird in the beginning but it will kind of help you have consistency across uh, everything that you're doing so that's how you actually move values you click and hold and then you drag up to manipulate 
And if you want to reset it to a default value, you double click. I want you to do that right now. Double click. It goes back to negative 36 dB, which is, you know, its default state. So let's um, hit the on button. We'll toggle it on. And then we will move the test tone up and it will get louder. Pretty neat. And that confirms that we have sound and we are manipulating a value within Ableton Live. So it's always up and down. So it'll, it'll just become muscle memory once you start doing that. So that's our test tone. That means that Ableton Live is able to communicate to our sound card. And how it communicates is via a driver. So a driver is a way for the program in question to communicate to your hardware. So I'm going to explain this uh, visually. So a driver, I'm, and I'm talking about the audio device up here. Look at this MME DirectX thing right here is very important. I'm actually going to uh, highlight that right there. So this is MME DirectX. This is the driver type. So what does that mean, the driver type? So back in the day, programs, right? Programs like Ableton were, you know, in their little box and they would do their kind of calculations and whatnot. And then there was the hardware here, right? So I'm going to actually do that. So this would be the, let me make this all nice and neat. This would be the program and this would be, you know, uh, Ableton or what have you, right? And it's creating a, a an audio signal or some sort of data that is audio, right? Audio comes out and uh, all that fun stuff. And then this would be the hardware. Uh, this would be your um, motherboard. Or this would be, you know, uh, more specifically, uh, your sound card, right? Or um, what have you. This would be an expanded thing that you'd plop into your motherboard. And, you know, back in the day, um, these would directly kind of connect to each other. And if there was an incompatibility here or an incompatibility here, uh, the sound... Um, would, uh, you know, not come out. There'd be no sound. You get like, it was chaos back then. Compatibility was utter, utter chaos. It was, it was quite bananas. So in recent years, there has been a, well, not recent, but like, they solved this by having something called an API. And what an API is, it's, uh, you know, AP. I. This would be something um, from uh, Windows. It would be called something like uh, dir uh, Direct. If I can spell Direct. That's awful. I'm going to redo that. Help me. Help me. My hands. Neuropathy. This would be uh, Direct. Direct X, right? And this would be a, I guess, a tertiary layer. And this would allow two way conversation between this Direct X and the program, and then Direct X and the sound card. And this would interpret and kind of be a middle person. And it worked super well because the program would only have to worry about talking to this. And this is a standard. This is, you know, for the most part, well documented, well understood. And it works. It works for, you know, your games. It works for your audio and all that fun stuff, right? The MME DirectX driver works. And that's what Ableton out of the box communicates with. And then, you know, the, the sound card, you know, reads information from that. And things just work 
95% of the time, it's amazing. It works. But, and this is getting more into the advanced stuff, but it's worth kind of explaining. This is a layer that interprets. So, you know, the, the program, you know, spits out stuff and, you know, it has to communicate to that and then this has to translate and then the protocol from this reads it from this so it, it causes a bit of a delay and that doesn't work for real-time audio if you wanted to like record and track and have you know better performance and stuff like that because these these things are sent in like blocks and packages right and they send them kind of sequentially right uh, in like blocks of data and uh you know this does it too right it sends it there sends it there and then you know another block will be sent here and that's how it communicates right and these uh blocks are buffers and the buffer size indicates you know how fast things because some things might not be able to keep up if there's if ableton is sending like a bunch of blocks holy crap, and the API is like, what the, what the heck's going on here? And then, you know, it can't keep up, you'll get a drop, it'll just say, okay, we're going to start again, and it'll kind of reset, cancel those blocks we couldn't do, let's just start again, and then you'll get something called a dropout. So keep that in mind um, when you're, you know, when you're doing that. You know, typically you're not going to run into any problems with that at all on a modern machine unless your buffer size is a little too small and you can you know increase it there's the input and the output buffer size there's the output buffer size and then the input so if you're getting dropouts and stuff like that just drag and increase this value here you'll be fine so why am i talking about drivers well you may have gotten a version of Ableton Live with a sound card that Santa brought you or something, you know? And you may have that sound card installed. I have one next, it's a big one next to me. Uh, you probably have like a, a Focusrite uh, Scarlet or something like that. And that's a completely different thing. So this would be... Um, you know, this right here, and then this right here. So this will be, um, you know, a, yeah, this will be Ableton. This will be the program. And then this will be your uh, sound card, or we call them interfaces, um, uh, or sound cards um or what have you and an interface will have uh let's say it'll have audio out you know audio in and then midi that's my drawing of midi midi out and midi in and midi we're going to get into that's an awful representation of midi but midi is you know data in and out and that's um, something that your motherboard or laptop does not have built into it, right? So that is something that's built into a lot of interfaces or sound cards that you get at, you know, um, Guitar Center or whatever the heck you do. So in this case, you do not use the, um, the tertiary layer of the Windows API. You use something called DirectX. No, not DirectX. <laughs> you use something called ASIO. And if I actually click on that ASIO right now, my computer is going to, uh, uh, my recording might get all wacky. I'm going to do it anyway because YOLO. I'm going to click on ASIO. Boom. So let's look at that and my device type. So there's, I'll go back to that. So there's MME DirectX. You have audio input type, which is your my, my, my microphone, because I have a USB microphone, and then I have a bunch of other stuff. My output, I have my real tech, which is through my motherboard, and then I have a thing called my uh, Sapphire, which um, you know supports uh, DX or DirectX. If I go into ASIO, ASIO is a different thing. Um, my motherboard audio does not support ASIO. But my sound card or interface 
hardware interface that I bought from a store does. And what ASIO is, is ASIO is direct communication between specialized audio direct communication between the program. That'd be Ableton. That would be uh, Cubase uh, because they invented it. That would be F. L, that'd be, you know, anything that supports ASIO it is a specialized uh, protocol and it's direct. So there's no, there's no, you know, buffers or interpretation. It's really fast and really efficient and it's really cool. There's no, there's no middleman. There's no middleman in the beginning, in the middle. It's, you know, direct in and out and it supports a number of different things like MIDI in and out, uh, you know, ADAT, word clock, all the things pertaining to music. And these support very high uh, sample rates, um, which we'll, we'll get into like 192K. Typically, um, uh, CD audio is 44.1K. K means thousand. Uh, but a lot of uh, the, the standard now, because of all the video editing and, and, and all that fun stuff with uh, frame rates, is 48K, right? And 48K, um, it, it doubles easily, right? So these, can, these will support higher quality audio and things like that, as well as um, increased bit depth. But that's for a different video. So keep that in mind. And just, yeah, keep that in mind. So that is that for the audio portion of it. Um, I'm not going to be able to help you with each and every configuration, but it's um, pretty well understood. You can see that my buffer size went down. Uh, I'll explain buffers later. I have a very high buffer size because of my what I do in video and stuff like that, but don't worry about that too much. But for the most part, let's stick to um, MME DirectX, just for, you know, the use case of uh, many people. So let's look at some important things. So I've, I've been doing these videos for a while, and I've talked to many producers from many different walks of life. And accessibility is a is an important thing, in my opinion. I think that electronic music production should be enjoyed by everyone. Um, and, you know, it doesn't matter how um, abled you are, you should be able to enjoy it. And there's a couple things that I want to briefly go over. If you go into look and feel... For people who are, I know someone who's legally blind and they produce and they really enjoy Ableton Live and they use a VST called Serum now because it scales really big. They can actually zoom the display in order to see better, right? So, you know, if you have like 2200 vision, you, you'll be able to, you'll be able to figure it out. And it's uh, you know, really positive that you can do that. So you can take that, slide it up, slide it down, depending on your resolution. It supports uh, DPI mode and all that fun stuff. Um, it's really great. And for people with light sensitivity, which uh, is something new for me because, you know, I ha sometimes I'm kind of sensitive to light. People are sensitive to blue light. You can actually change the theme and the brightness uh, to something a little bit more appropriate for your eyes. Um, you can increase the brightness, which I don't really want to do. If you're if you're into that or you're operating in a, in a highlight environment, we can you know use the light theme if you want to blind yourself. But uh, yeah, we can go to uh, mid dark or dark if you want to you know really get in the mood for music production. All these are valid. I stick with the with the default just because it's, you know, familiar and all of that. We can actually change the color temperature. Some people are sensitive to a blue light. We can uh, change it 
and uh, get rid of a lot of the blues for the most part. I'm not sure what, what setting it is. Um, but there's also programs called uh, Flux, and Windows 10 has a built-in uh, blue light setting that works quite well. So that's for accessibility and the initial setup of Ableton Live. I told you I would be thorough and all that fun stuff. So I hope this is uh, working out for you. Next up, we're going to be going over the basic UI and we're going to be making some stuff. It's going to be really fun. So I hope you stick around. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned stuff. Take care and have a good one.